This video shows fundamentally new method of probabilistic modeling. It is not a modification of any other technique known at this moment. The name is divisive data resorting. The origin of this name will become clear after the explanation. If you consider deterministic modeling, their goal is to find mapping F, which converts observed values called inputs or features into predicted scalars called outputs or targets. We consider the systems with aleatoric uncertainty, where the outputs are random variables with input-dependent distributions. The distributions in general may be multimodal, that means having several peaks, and may vary significantly in the field of input definition. The goal is to train model to predict correct distribution even for the new or unseen inputs not used in the training process. There is only one critical property of the model system that considered in this video device of data resorting rely on. It is gradual changes in distributions, which means that for similar inputs the output distributions should be also insignificantly different. This method introduced and researched by Mike Poloektov and Andrew Poller. The video is designed by Andrew Poller. The closest competitive methods are k-nearest neighbors and Bayesian neural networks. For the soft introduction, we use elementary example. Let us consider the system with one input and one output. The input is the quantity of dice and the output is the sum of values obtained in a random row, like in this picture. The input is 6, the output is 21. On the right hand side, we show how training dataset may look like. This scatter plot shows randomly generated data. The plotted points don't expose the type of distribution, not enough points for each individual input. We can show the true distributions for 3 dice and for 10 dice. They are different not only in expectations and variances, and they are not normal. The distributions are approaching normal according to central limit theorem for growing number of dice. In the first step, we choose basic deterministic model. The choice is outside of the suggested method. The divisive data resorting uses any provided model. For this simple example, the linear model is a good fit. Later, we show more general example with non-linear underlying model. The role of the chosen model will be clear further in explanation. After the model is identified by error minimization, we sort all records according to residual errors and split them into two subsets over the median. In order to see these subsets, we mark them into different colors. Now we make another two deterministic models for each subset, which we call expectation models, since they are obtained by error minimization. Now we apply the same sort and split over the median within these two subsets and get four deterministic models. This process may continue, but it has room only for a limited number of models. It can normally be 8 or 16 for even larger and more complex datasets. We can see that subsets are quickly becoming smaller and residual errors are decreasing. For this data we can obtain probably eight deterministic models, but not more. This small ensemble is a representation of stochastic system and can be used for estimating expectations and variance, but it is not large enough to build a distribution. We also can see an advantage over applying k-nearest neighbors. The data can have gaps and local irregularities. The ensemble provides some sort of smoothing over the training dataset. In this screen, we show how to dramatically increase the size of ensemble. The numbers in the table are initial positions of the records. The short size of the dataset is used for visualization. We show four resorting steps as it was already explained, and then we apply sliding window. It selects a certain number of adjacent records in a sorted dataset, then it moves further with overlapping and selects next set. It builds the new model for each new set. In this way, we can expand an ensemble from eight to near 100 models. Having 100 models may already allow approximate distribution. However, we can still increase the size of output sample by adding a random disturbance to an input used for prediction, as it is shown in this table. The inputs are discrete, but the models are continuous. 
So by adding m disturbance values for a given input and having n models, we can obtain n times m outputs, which can be large enough to numerically estimate the distribution. Now we show how it works for the more challenging case. The previous example was too simple. It has one input with radially dependent unimodal distribution. Now we have two sets of dice of different quantities and probabilistic switch for the choice. The data may be even generated in a physical experiment at home by using two die sets and a coin. The coin is flipped and either die set is selected according to outcome of flipping. Then selected set is rolled to obtain output or target. The distributions obviously are bimodal in general. In this example, the coin is replaced by a third input parameter, which is probability of choosing the first die set, assuming the choice of the other as an opposite event. The dice are virtual, they have 10 edges, not 6. The probability is shown at the first parameter as integer, assuming that actual probability is obtained by its division by range, which is 10. For example, when it is 7, it means that probability of choosing the first die set is 70% and the other is 30%. On the left hand side, we can see how comma separated data may look like. On the right hand side, we can see the according true distributions. The dataset size in this test is 2000 records, which means that some identical inputs may be found in data, however their quantity does not allow to estimate multimodal distribution by sampling. In this last screen, we can see the chosen basic deterministic model, or as we call it, deterministic component in ensemble, which is kolmogorov arnold representation. By accuracy, this model is approximately equivalent to neural networks and represents the tree of nested functions. The identification technique for this model is known and can be found by googling along with coding samples. Below the formula, we show the distribution for a particular input obtained by applying divisive data resorting on the left and conventional true distribution on the right. We can see that multimodality is identified and the type of distribution is recognized qualitatively. The accuracy of this method was compared by authors to Bayesian neural networks by applying Keras and TensorFlow libraries to the same dataset. The links to coding samples are provided below the pictures.